chapter 18, verses 28 to 30. Luke chapter 18, verses 28 to 30. chapter 18, 28 through 30. We're going to read together the count of three. One, two, three. Let's go. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed you. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive many more in this present time and in the world to come everlasting life? Everlasting Father, we want to thank you this morning. Do you live outside time and space? For you created or you made us, you kept us into this time and space. It's another time, the first Sunday of the month of December, the last month of year 2021, Lord. The clock is ticking, but we are thank you because we are standing to you and by you. Even in the remaining days of this year, we pray all your promises concerning all that are yet and they will come to fruition in the name of Jesus. As we go into your word, we pray. Holy Spirit, give us interpretation to the redemption of our spirit and soul. We vow to return the glory unto you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So a rich man, a rich ruler came to Jesus Christ. And he was asking, how can I possess eternal life? And Jesus Christ responded by saying, yes, um, go, 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 go and obey the laws. He said, but I, I obey all the laws. I know the Torah by heart. I obey. He said, Jesus Christ said, but there is one thing that, that is left for you to do. He said, go home, sell all you have, feed the poor, then come back to follow me. And Bible said, because he was rich, he became certain in his spirit and soul. And I would say he went away from Jesus Christ. He did not follow Jesus Christ because of his possession, because of the earthly possession. He left. Then, thereafter, the disciples came to Jesus Christ. And they charged him, Peter, the bedrock of the church. Because Jesus Christ said, it's going to be hard for anyone to enter into the kingdom. That's upset them, that grieved them, that upset to them. But we have left everything for your sake. No wife, no husband, no children, no family. We are, are, are we going to possess eternal life? Jesus Christ said, things that are impossible for men, they are possible with God. Amen. In this ethnic realm uh, where we live, we, we love to be appreciated. Are you, uh, am I the yes, only sir. one? Yes, Every human being, including the young guy, what? Yes. Loves to be appreciated. You see, it's, it's in the gene of our Heavenly Father. It's in his gene. In the scripture of saying, the book of Psalm 22, verse 3, that God has built the princes of the Israelites. He, he delights in their praises. He delights in their praises. Worship. So, are we? We, we, we? we are born in his own making. Praise the Lord. And for those of us that are, that are parents, when we try to send our children out to do something, they want us to do it. We, we know what to do, right? Okay. Um, $1 for you, you do it. Okay, $10 for you, you do it. Okay, twenty dollars for you. And before you know it, they will jump at it and they will do it. Yeah. For those younger want candy, they'll tease them with candy. But they still don't value money. Tease them with candy. They will jump up and do it. Why? We need them to be rewarded. We need them to be rewarded. The wages that you are paid every two, two weeks or every month is as a result of the input your contribution to your places of work. Yes, that attracts what? Reward. 
The many of you that have been longer in the place of work after 10 years or 15 years, they're going to get you a plaque and say, you know what, uh, for your excellent performance, <laughs> for being with us for these 10 years, we are giving you this award. Amen. Everybody wants to, they, they do that just to encourage you to show that, yes, you are valuable. You contribute and impact in their their, 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 their company. Praise the Lord. So are we in the kingdom of God. No amen to that? There is nothing you have done or you have been or you will do that God does not know and he's not going to reward. He will reward you. God will reward you. Every contribution, I'm not talking about Monetarily, monetarily is aside. Every service is in the kingdom. And trust what? Reward. And God will reward you. Amen. So many of you will be thinking, the year is coming to an end. I've been serving God. I've been doing everything in my ministry. The youth department, the men department, the choir. And they want to come for, they want to go last. What is the hard nothing to show for it? Please be quiet. Just be quiet. Keep it to yourself. Yes. Tell the devil to keep quiet. Yes, that's right. You know, something got because of those carrots. No, it's good you have it, but guess what? Eternity cannot be bought. Yes. And I say it's well, better. Yes. Eternity cannot be bought. Yes. And God has given it unto you already. Yes. I, I thought you were going to be rejoicing yes. about that one. Yes. Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 2, 9, 10. Salvation is a gift of God. Salvation is a gift of God. How you are sitting down, where you are sitting down, you did not pay for it. The breath of life that you are breathing, you did not pay for it. Grace and ability to see, to hear, you did not pay for it. I need to stand up this morning, go to the bathroom, take a good shower, hot shower. You did not pay for it. The grace of God. The grace of God. Many of you work in the, in the hospital, and I, I, I always don't want to say more, but when you go to the hospital, what do you say? No good thing. You're clocking in the morning, you take care of people. After eight hours, ten hours, you clock in and you are going. The people you met there, you are leaving them there again. Yes. And that is where you make money from. You're making money off their own illnesses. Yes. Yes. Do you understand it? Yes, because if they are not there, you have no job. You are jobless. You have every reason to be grateful, brothers and sisters. Amen. You have every reason to be grateful unto God. Every reason. In the remaining weeks of this month, we have your four weeks. Now, please take your eyes away from your knees, your wants. Focus on God. In being appreciative of what God has done for you. In the corporate world now, what they will be doing is just to round up the year. Begin to balance the account. Nothing new is coming again. It's just balancing our account and begin to plan for next year. Don't wait until the December 31st before you say, Oh, God, I thank you. No, no. Begin to thank God now. For January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Thank God already for December. And then the fifth, the fourth Sunday of the month. Thank God. That you will end this year away. Amen. Thank God for 2022. Yes, begin to thank God. Open your heart and begin to ask Him, Lord, what do you want me to do and do better next year? Yes. Even in your kingdom. Yes. What do you want me to do better? Yes. Which area do you want me to be committed to next year, 2022? How will I serve you better yes. in 2022? Open your heart for it. Look closer. Yes. We all need each other. We all need each other, brothers and sisters. We all need each other. Oh. Amen, amen. Pastor Ashley, we all need each other. Amen, I don't know if the wind is going to blow me to Jamaica next year. We all need each other. Amen. If I'm blown to Jamaica, I can say I have a brother that I can sleep with. Yes. I, can, I can stay with. Right? Yes. I don't know, maybe the wind is going to blow me to 80 next year. I say, Mrs. Laforest, I want to go to Haiti. I say, okay, go somewhere that I'll, I'll get somebody to pick you up. Amen. We all need each other. Yes, sir. 
We all need each other. We all need each other. In whichever way you find yourself to serve God, please serve God wholeheartedly. There is a reward for it. We are not serving it because of the reward, but it's interesting. They are receiving the word. Hebrew 11 says, says, Hebrew 11 says, give us a Hebrew 11 says. So now I love to follow my, my script, but when I come in here, I don't, I don't go to the script, but I thank God for it. <laughs> Hebrew 11 says, media, please don't sleep on me. See, but without faith, it is impossible to please who? God. God. To please him, God. For he that come to God must believe that he is. That he is a what? A rewarder. A rewarder. You, you see, underline that word in your, your Bible. A rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Diligence come to play when you are serving God. We don't serve God half a Saturday. We don't serve God lukewarmly. Diligently. In pursuit of God. You be diligent to seek Him, to pursue Him. Nothing come in between you and God. You don't allow yourself to be distracted. Hallelujah. He declared the beginning from the end. He declared the end from the beginning. He knows you while you were in the womb of your mother. Everything about your life, he has already ordained it. Right. Pursue God. For those who came here for three days prayer, we had, we spoke about the book of Deuteronomy chapter 13, we read from verse 1 to 8. It was the story of Moses. Moses, when Moses was about to, to wrap up his journey, God called him up. I told him, go to Mount Pisgah. Deuteronomy chapter 34, when you get home, you read it. Deuteronomy 34 is the last chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. And God said, Moses, um, <clears throat> you were with me for 40 years. You led this one for 40 years. But in between, though I know you were a meek man, but you made some mistakes. Though I promise that you're going to lead them to promised land, but you won't go to promised land. Go to Mount Pisgah. I'm going to show you the promised land. You will see it from afar, but your feet will not step in there. That was how Moses ended his journey. He was not meant to die on four months. Peace. He was meant to take his straight life from Egypt to promised land. But guess what? The people that he was leading, the people that he was leading, the Israelite that he was leading, caused him to stumble. Cause him to sin against God. They provoke him. They got the best out of him. <laughs> and his anger was displayed. Up was displayed. And he got God angry. And for that, God said, nah, 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 nah. You won't get to the promised land. Now, I said it casually here on Friday. Why God was angry with the Israelites and told Moses, Moses, uh, uh, all these ones. No, I'm tired of them. Let me kill them and raise up new people for you. What did Moses do? Moses went before God and interceded, prayed. He went to the ancient of putting his blood on the line. If you will kill them, kill me. Hello? Right. But when God now decided to judge Moses. Nobody interceded for Moses. You know what they did for, for Moses after Moses died? They cried. They, they, cried. they, they cried. cried. Not just one day, 30 days after he died. They would have cried to God 30 days before he died. But he did it. He did it. Moses died. They couldn't see his dead body. They stayed where they were for 30 days. They were crying for 30 days until God showed up and led them through Joshua. Now, this is where I'm going. Now, I'm talking about the services of God that are Christ's reward. If you go to the book of Jude, Jude verse 9, the book of Jude, the Bible says the archangel Michael 
was contending with the devil. We were contending with the devil because of the body of Moses. Though Moses died upon Mount Pisgah, he did not get to the promised land, but Moses was saved. All his labor for God was not in vain. I don't know what you think you have lost. I don't know what you think you have lost. Brother and sister, mommy and daddy, hold on to your God. Hold on to the God of the Bible. Hold on to faith in God. He will reward you. There is nothing that comes from the mouth of God that will return unto him void. Everything God has said concerning you, if you believe, nothing, no devil, no devil can stop it. Are you with me? Yes, sir. No devil can stop the will, the plan, the purpose of God for you and your household. We be made glory for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Devil have no authority over our lives. Then let me help you for, for those of you who are Bible scholars here. The reason why Peter and the apostles were so much concerned about their reward was because they had not the Holy Spirit in their own time. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. In the book of Luke chapter 9 and Luke chapter 10, when God sent the disciples out, two by two he sent them, they did not have the Holy Spirit. That's strange to you? The Holy Spirit came after Jesus Christ died. While Jesus Christ was with them, they don't have the Holy Spirit. And that was why they were concerned about their reward. About their every, they did not have the Holy Spirit. You and I have the Holy Spirit right now. A better covenant we have than the apostles. A better covenant. After Jesus Christ died and the Spirit of God came upon them, Philippians 1 21, Apostle Paul said, For me to live is to die. And for me to die is what? Yeah. What was the difference? The difference was by the Holy Spirit, they have no life. They were not concerned about what the physical things would give them anymore. But while Christ was still with them, they were concerned because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Do you have the Holy Spirit in you? Take your eyes away. Because when the Spirit comes in, the Spirit, the Spirit knows your five senses. If you are still living by your five senses, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Or you have the Holy Spirit, you don't relate it, you don't share intimacy with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not guiding you. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you get involved with some people uh, or to something, or you've done some things that people say, but I did it, it's not working well. How come it worked well for you? Have you tried it before? Have you done it before? Yeah. It's not Jesus, it's different. the difference is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Pastor, how did he do it? What do you mean, how did I do it? Ah, Pastor, how, how are you doing it? How you, what do you mean, how am I doing it? Get the Holy Spirit, you will do it. Peter said, if it is he, Master, bid me to come and walk on the water. Say, bid me, tell me to come, and I will come. By the rhema, Jesus Christ said, come, and began to walk on the water. Then when he began to look at his surroundings, he began to sink. Who is leading you? Who is inspiring you? Who is in you? Christ in all the hope of God. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Who is inside of you? Who is the reason why you are here? Who is the reason? Why did you come? You come to see man? To see Pastor Johnson? You come to the mountain that is full of multitude of angels. The foundation is not by man. God himself. God himself is on the mountain. He is with you. He is with us. He will reward of gold and silver have I not. Those who said gold and silver have I not, they were those that were asking Jesus Christ, where is our gold? Where is our silver? Why he was still there? Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Say so we are forsaking all. What will be our gain? Okay, so let's say, if you, if you lose father, mother, family member, 
on earth here, you will have it. He said, manifold, he said. But they couldn't comprehend it. They couldn't comprehend it. After he left, Peter and John got to the gate of building. The Bible says, we saw a lame man that was there at the shepherd's table. And he said, hmm. Gold, silver, earthly things have we not. But the spiritual thing that is embedded in us, don't serve God because of what you want to get from God. Yeah. Minister, deacon, pastors, don't serve God because of what you're going to get from God. Yes, don't put, if somebody is whispering to your hearing, what are you getting? Who are you using it? What are they paying you? Tell them, hold your peace. Hold your peace. Nobody spend money in heaven. Nobody. Either pounds, sterling, or yen, or dollar is not being spent. We, 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 we identify with them in this realm. Genesis 1 and 2, money was not mentioned. And God yes. made everything. Yes. God did not meet anything with money. Genesis 1 and 2, money was not there. And God created everything. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord reward, the Lord reward your faithfulness. Amen. Gold and silver have I not. But in the name of the Lord who called me, I pray for you. I pray with you. The Lord will reward your faithfulness. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let me just throw it at you even before we round up. Those guys some requirements. Requirements for serving God. Requirements for serving God. And when you want to apply to school, they'll tell you there are some curriculums that you need to meet up with. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there are some curriculums that you need to meet up with to, to be able to serve. God. And one which is, I believe many of us know, the top of the list is regeneration. Regeneration. You've got to be born again. No amen to that? Amen. You've got to be born again. Ah. You know, I don't want to offend you. Now. Born again is not knowing how to, to speak in tongues, to dream, dream, to prophesy. That's not being born again. I know how to pray. I can quote the scripture. Satan quoted the scripture to Jesus Christ. Born again is transformation from within and become Christ like in actions, in all trusts, in demeanor, in the devils. By their fruits, we shall know them. Hot water and cold water cannot come out of the same spring unless your foul set. God is being projected like that. You can't be cold and be hot. That's ungodliness. Let's know who you are in Christ. Be born, tell yourself, I'm born again. Fill with the spirit of the living God. When you're not born again, when you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you will stumble yes, in serving God. Men will cause you to stumble. Yes. Women will cause you to stumble. Yes. The young will cause you to stumble. The old will cause you to stumble. Yes. But once you have the Spirit of God in you, what they say or do will not matter to you anymore. Yes. But it is no more you, but it is Him in you yes. that makes a difference. Be born again. Be born again. Be born again. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Let him be the head of your life. Not live service. Let him be head over your life. Be born again. You are in the world, but you're not meant to be part of the world. That's why he's saying in his word in the book of Matthew 5, uh, 16, 13 to 16, he said, I made you the light of the world. 
light of the world. The world is darkness. He has already made you light. You can't afford yourself to go back into the dark world. I keep saying no one ever come to light and delight in darkness. No one ever comes to light. No, the reality of life that would desire to go back to, the, to darkness. No one, except you haven't seen the light. Except you haven't seen the light. When you have seen the light, you will enjoy being in light. Be inside light. You will enjoy it. And everything about you, we abhor darkness. We hate darkness. Everything in you. Say, I have loved righteousness and hated iniquity. I was talking about Jesus in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 9. So, therefore, God has elevated him. God has elevated because he loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Say, therefore, our God, your God, my God, has elevated him above all his brethren. Do you love righteousness? Are you standing right in the presence of God? Job chapter 1 verse 8. God spoke unto the devil. Have you considered my son Job? And he said, there is none as upright as him in the whole universe. Can God say that of you? Can God say that of you? In 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, Bible say the eyes of the Lord go to and fro the universe, searching for those who are lawyer, that he might show himself strong on their behalf. The eyes of God is on you. Where you are sitting, when you get out of here, where you'll be doing throughout the week and the rest of your life, the eyes of God is constantly with you. While you are driving, you're eating, you're drinking, you're sleeping. The eyes of God is on you. You can't hide from him. I can't hide from him. None of us can hide from him. Nothing we do that God does not know. Can God say, my son, you are standing right? Can he say, my daughter, you are standing right? Are you righteous? Are you upright? To serve God without blemish, without wrinkle. That was what God told Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 through 3. He said, go before me, walk before me without spot or wrinkle or blemish. Without wrinkle, without blood, without spot. Are you transformed? I charge you, brothers and sisters. The reason why you're still picking up fences is because you haven't given it up completely. You are still working in progress. Give it up completely. Tell him, Lord, I can't do anything without you. That will enhance your service to his kingdom. Let me shock you. In serving God, you have to serve people. <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah. Amen. In serving God, you should simply serve people. Yes, and the same people you are serving, they are the ones that are going to obstruct you. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you remember, I just I coined the issue of Moses inside. The people that he was leading caused him to stumble. The people he was interceding for, praying for, three million people, 40 years in the wilderness. They didn't allow him to get to the promised land. But thank God for grace. Are you, are you, are you with me? So if you don't have the grace, and he's the meekest person. God said, Moses is the meekest person. The meekest. But then he didn't make it to the promised land. You are astonished? Yes. I pray that people around you will not hinder you from getting to the promised land. Yes. People you are serving. Yes. The kings, the king, pastor, pastors, ministers, elders of the house. 
the people are, I pray that it will not be a stumbling block. A stumbling block. A stumbling block. You are called to serve them. <laughs> but what, be watchful. Lean on the Holy Spirit. What you hear, what you see, what you feel. If you allow it to get in, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause the stumble. But that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Regeneration. Write it down because of our time, Romans 7, 6. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 through 21. Let me round up. I'll build my kid. Let me round up. Hmm. you got to be regenerated. Become a new creature. So let every old thing become old. And give yourself to become a new person. Filled with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Take all of the lists. You need absolute loyalty to God. If you're not loyal to God, you can serve people of God. Absolute loyalty. Absolute commitment. Matthew 6, 24. Second Chronicles 16, 9. Hebrew 11, 6. The word diligence distinguished in that coin rewarding in the book of Hebrews says, those who diligently seek him, he will reward. Those who diligently seek him, he will reward. So you got to be committed absolutely to God. Absolutely. So that you can have reward. Thirdly, upright walking. Upright walking. Psalm 101 verse 6 and Job chapter 1 verse 8. Upright walking. You got to be upright. Give me Psalm 101 verse 6, Rich. Psalm 101 verse 6. You got to be upright. If you have God knows, and that is what is going to reward. So I want to one verse six. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, in all that translation, in an upright way, he shall serve me. If you don't walk uprightly, you can't serve God. If the devil can lay a charge on you, you can't serve God. If the devil have a hold on you, you can't serve God. See what we went through in our previous um, 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 why would we people were like, okay, the, the, the Russian has something against our president. You know what we went through that time? And so it is in the spiritual realm. When the devil have a hold at you, you can't serve God. You won't be able to serve God. You will be in and out. The devil see me. The devil is going to expose me. The devil is going to. <laughs> Amen. You have a secret lover in your church. Ah. <laughs> secret lover. <laughs> or somebody you borrow money from. When you come to show your heart, you'll be pumping like this. <laughs> Maybe she will tell my wife. Maybe she will tell my husband. They have a hold on you. You gotta be upright. Be yes, both a, a righteous man should be as bold as what? Yes, Bring it up. Yes. They can only gossip. They can only backbite. And it's gonna be behind you. Yes, because they are not bold. If they are bold, then bring it up. Yes, but stand to be upright. Yes. Stand to be upright. Whatever they are saying in the secret, it will die in secret because they can't bring it open. Okay. It's all lies. Bring it open. Let us hear, let us hear your nonsense. Mm -hmm. Use my language. Mm -hmm. Come on now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You got to be all private and sisters. Yeah. You see the reason why we don't talk much of sin because we are all committing sin. I don't read the Bible. For the vision is in there. Do you hear it from the pulpit? No. Why not? Because we don't, we don't want to offend people. Come on now. 
I will come to praise you. Mine is to teach you the word of God Amen. that is able to edify your soul. Don't preach fornication. Sin is sin. Every unrighteousness is a sin. Gossip in life, by party, it's all sin. Leave it. And you find me doing it, call me, charge me. The pastor will hear this about you. Be upright. Hallelujah. Love. Love. Galatians 5 13, please. Love. You got to love because God is love. How do we know that God is love? Bible says God showed his love towards us that when we were still in sin, he allowed his son to die for our sin. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Why ye were all sinners? He sent his son to die. Give me about Galatians 5. Did you get about Galatians 5, 5, 5 13? Say, for brethren, ye have been called unto what? Unto liberty. See, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love. Do what? Do what? Do what? By love, serve one another. By love. When you love me, you want to correct me. You don't, you don't, you don't come from the angle of judging me. You don't come from the angle of condemning me. You come, Pastor, you can do better. I expect better. What happened? What went wrong? I'm here with you. That was I want to hear from you. Don't tell me I use words where I meant to use is. What's my concern about that? Sit me down. Say, Pastor, I'm sorry. I don't know how you're going to take it, but I, I've been wrestling with my spirit. Can we do it this way? I will not be fool enough to say, no, we can't. I will lean towards you and I will say, thank you, my dear. The Lord bless you. I say, help us of this into your life as well. Don't condemn me at the back. Don't stab me at the back. Serve God with love. Because he must love us. Do we merit the love you are enjoying him? You do not. What did you do to, to qualify for it? Nothing. But he allowed his son to die for you. Do you understand that? The price that was paid. Christ redeemed of Galatians 3.13. For the cost of blood. See, he caused his sin that he for the day. He died. He nailed himself to the cross so that he can give you life. Love your neighbor, brothers and sisters. Love your neighbor. Love your husband. Love your wife. Love your children. Children, love your parents. Let's love each other. Even though there will be life after death, not in this world again, it will be in the presence of God. While we are still, let's love each other. Pick up the phone and see text messages. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. How are you doing? It doesn't take away from you, it adds values to you. You check up on your brothers and sisters, it adds values to you. It doesn't take anything from you. It doesn't make you a weakling. It adds values to you. You will drop the phone, the pastor will say, wow, oh, the pastor called me today. Wow, somebody is still praying for me. You know what that goes? You know how that goes to our God? Love your neighbors. Humility. Acts 20, 19. The fear of God. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Apostle Paul said on the church in Philippians, he said, work out your salvation with what? Fear. fear. And what? Trembling. And trembling. God bless you, sir. Fear and trembling in serving God. Don't be too comfortable and think you have the spirit of God so you can do anything. No, don't be too comfortable. With all the accolades, they come to you. Oh, pastor, oh, deacon, oh, deaconess. And you think you're double. Don't be too comfortable. Work out your salvation with fear. Fear and trembling. That your maker, your God, can appear anytime and judge you. Where will he find you? Fear of God. Hallelujah. Then accept serving people as a responsibility. Accept, accept serving your brother and sister, serving in your local church or churches as a responsibility. The pastor said a clip to me last week. My wife wanted me to share last week. I just, I just ignored it. 
The pastor was sick. This really, really, really life. Was sick in the hospital. And uh, if the pastor's wife was sick in the hospital, and Jesus appeared to her and said, uh, send for your husband to come. He said, yeah, you guys are both pastors in the church. Very good. He said, but if you die now, do you think you will make it to heaven? He said, yes, I will. He said, no, you won't make it. He said, you and your husband, every Sunday, you drag your feet to come to church late. When the praise and worship is going on, then you throw in as the God of the church. Say, you have been doing this for years. Say, send for your husband now. I want you to repent now because you will die. Say, but send for your husband. Pick up the nurse and tell him, oh yeah, call my husband. The husband came. Are you okay? When the husband got there, the husband said his wife has transformed. She was looking at an angel. Mm -hmm. wow. The lady has said, didn't know. So he saw the lady and said, are you okay? Say, yeah, I'm okay. Say, I just saw God. Ah, what happened? Say, this is what God said. He too broke down and began to cry. The lady died. Are you with me? The lady died. She, God gave her a chance to repent. She repented and she eventually died. I tell you, this is not the end. There will be a life after here. What are you doing to the kingdom, to your God? If you come to the what will you say? Who, who, who is hindering you? Who, who is stopping you from serving him in spirit and in who? What? The pastor went home, called his friends, and began to, to announce to them, do you want to make it to heaven? Be in church very early on Sunday. I'm not telling you to come to church early, but I'm telling you a true story. Not just to church. In whatever way you are serving God, be prompt, be punctual. Know your commitment level to God. Be sincere. Be genuine. Be genuine. You don't know when. I don't, as I'm saying, I don't know when. My prayer is when he will come and I will be able to say yes. Thank you, Daddy. I made it. Are you, are you thinking about it? Tomorrow is not guaranteed, it's not promising to no one. It's not. Take it as a responsibility. As long as I live, I will serve God and I will serve my neighbors. When it is comfortable, when it is not comfortable, as long as I live, I will serve God and I will serve my neighbor. I don't care what you give me or what you don't give me. I'm not serving you because of what you want to give me. It is my responsibility. I'm not praying. If I tell you, he say, I pray for you every day, it's just rubbish that for you to like me. No. But it's my responsibility. When I don't do it, I don't feel calm. I don't have peace. I wake up in the morning, I will pray for myself, my family, and I will say, that's okay. I don't have peace. How to mention everybody? General one. Individual one. Take it as responsibility. Yeah. Go into next year, ask yourself, what do you want to do better for God? How do you want to serve humanity? Better in your local church among your family. How do you want to be better? Better husband, better wife, better children to your parents in 2022. How will I be better? Help me, Lord. Let me run through the reward and we are out of here. One of the reward is divine honor. John chapter 12, verse 26. Divine honor. 
divine honor. The Lord honor you. The Lord delight in you and honor you. Once you honor God, he will honor you. You become acceptance and acceptable before God. You become an acceptance and you become acceptable before God once you learn and know how to do what? To serve God with all the requirements and many more that I've mentioned. You become the inheritance of God. Colossians 3 24, write this down. You read really it when you get home. You become the inheritance of God. In other words, you become God's property. Listen, the, the devil was contending with the body of Moses. God sent angels to contend with the devil because the body of Moses become what? The, it's, it's God. Touch no more anointed one. You become God's property, become God's inheritance. And finally, finally, you have the reward of eternal blessing. Eternal blessing. Eternal blessedness. Revelation chapter 7, verse 15, and Revelation 22, verse 3. There will be no sorrow in there. There will be no sorrow in there. You and I will be in the presence of God. We can see, we can know each other. We won't have this body, but our spirit will recognize each other. Sister, you made it. Brother, you made it. Daughter, you made it. Son, you made it. We will recognize each other. Pastor, you made it. Blessed. Listen, it's blessed. Oh my goodness. How glorious would that day be? How glorious would that day be? How glorious would it be if you and I can make it to heaven? Despite all that we have suffered on this earth planet. If we make it, how good will it be? Stand on your feet. I don't know how you have been serving God. I don't know, maybe you're thinking, oh, they say they don't, they've been talking of Jesus Christ will come, they have been talking for 22,000 years, he's not coming, there is no life after him. I don't know, maybe you are screwed out of thought. I don't know. Maybe somebody has offended you in church. Maybe it's your own pastor, your pastor, Mrs. Somebody has spoken something, somebody has said something, and that's why I don't care what they did. I don't know. It's not about them. It's not about the local church. It's about the real church. <laughs> it's about the real church that Christ said, Christ said, I have built my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail. I want you to talk to God this morning. To the choir were here yesterday while. Many of us are busy doing whatever we need to do. They were training our children. God, they want to bear the best out of them during Christmas time. Many of you took out from work. Many of you, yesterday was your day off. You're supposed to be enjoying yourself, your husband, your wife, your children, but you were here. Huh? Many of you have been pouring your resources, your finances to support the church. If Christ comes, God forbid, and you don't make it. What will, I, what, what will amount all your efforts? What will it amount to? What will it amount to? I want you to pray unto the Lord. Renew me, Lord. Create a new spirit within me from this day. The spirit that long after you, the spirit that know you, the spirit that is eager to serve you. Lord, renew me. Create in me a new spirit. Create in me a new spirit. The spirit of God. The spirit of God. The spirit of God that will teach me, train me, mentor me, lead me, guide me in the things of God. Baptize me with that spirit, Lord. Pray that under the ocean of that spirit, that your steps will be ordered. He will lead, he will guide, he will uphold, he will direct. Who can know the mind of God and say the Spirit of God that is in a man? Pray that the Spirit of God in you take absolute control over all your senses. That nothing matters to you and for you except the kingdom of God and serving God on this planet earth. Pray for your children. 
Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Pray for people under you, your co-workers. Pray for your boss. Pray. The year is coming to an end. Pray in your neighborhood that the Lord will be so impact lives. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, impact us. Breathe on us, Lord. Touch us, Lord. Those who are sick, heal them, Lord, that they can be useful in your kingdom. Those that have been hindered financially, those who have become handicapped, Lord, Lord, bless them, Lord, that they can be useful for your kingdom. Those that have been oppressed and marginalized, Lord, set them free. Lord, pray them, King of glory and the Lord of Lord, that we can be more useful for your kingdom. Those who have been discouraged, my God and my Lord, encourage us, Lord, that we can be more useful for your kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Breathe on us, King of glory. Breathe on us, Lord of Lord. We want to see more of you. 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 We want to see more of you in our homes, Lord, in our careers, Lord, in this our local church, in the church of the body of Christ. We want to see more of you in our careers, Lord, in our jobs and businesses. We want to see more of you in our neighborhood, in our city. We want to see more of you in this nation, across the globe. We want to see more of you. More of you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For those who ask to receive, that they fill us up. Fill us up, Lord, with abundance of your grace and glory. Thank you, righteous God. We bless you. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let our hands together for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. That we receive more of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Please let's stretch forth our hands and let's just release the blessings of God upon the servants of the Lord this morning. Father, we just want to come before your throne of grace this hour. And we lift up your servants, O oh God, into your hands this day. And we ask, O oh God, that you would take him from glory to glory. Lift him up, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you know his heart desires, O oh God. Lord, grant them, O oh God, grant him every single of his desires in the name of Jesus, that he will not be weak, he will not be weary, he will not be tired. Take him from grace to grace. Give him the right auction to function, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, lead him in your path of righteousness, that he will not fall even on the wayside, and he will make it to the next side, and the next side is your kingdom. Father, Lord, this word will not stand against any one of us, even on this day, that day of judgment, in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you, we we'll bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It is an awesome time to be in the very presence of the Lord. We are about to observe one of the greatest commandments that Christ has commanded us to do, to actually be a partaker of this great blessing. Amen. For us to know that the purpose of him coming is to save us completely. And he died on, our, on that cross of Calvary by giving himself to us as a ransom. Not just to few, but to all. Amen. So I want you to just bow down your heads this hour and just look at the pain Jesus went through on your behalf. That he has set you completely free. I want you to know that whatsoever that is in your system, that is not supposed to be there. Bring it before the Lord this hour and talk to God. The Lord, I know that my healing is permanent. In the name of Jesus, that my body is the temple of God where the spirit of the Lord dwells in. And whatsoever that defiles this body, the Lord God has promised us that he will defile in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you. We surrender completely. And we pray that we will not eat to our damnation in the name of Jesus. But we will be a partaker because we are saved by grace and not by works. Thank you, Father, Lord God, because we are your workmanship. We bless you, O oh Lord, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please, ministers of God, can you just take this? Uh, let's just wait for everyone to be served. Let's just give us 
that has been commanded by God to us, to all mankind. In the book of Matthew chapter 26, if you look down from the verse 26 up to 28, what the Lord did, he called forth together his disciples, the ones that are closer to him, and he wanted to show us what we need to carry on, even after himself. As he called them together, he said, listen, this actually represents my body. My body that will be destroyed. My body that will be broken for all mankind. He gave us life. He died so that we can have life and have it in abundance. So he took the bread and he said, listen, I am going to bless this. I break it and I will share it among each other. Because you have to be a partaker. You cannot say you love me and you're not part of me. You have to be part of me. We are all part of Christ. Whether young or old, we are Christ's workmanship. So as you take this this hour, the Lord God will heal you completely. The Lord will touch your heart. The Lord will renew your mind. Romans 12 says that do not be confirmed to this world, but be renewed by the transforming of your mind. May all of us this hour let our mind be renewed and our body, soul, and spirit as well be renewed with the blood of Jesus. May we all take. Just the bread. Amen. Right after he took the cup of the New Testament, he says it represents his blood. His blood is the blood that is powerful. The blood of Jesus is potent. The blood of Jesus speaks clearer, better. When you call upon the blood of Jesus, the blood will save you. The blood will sanctify you. The blood will purify you. Who can lay a charge against you when the Lord God, or who can speak a word into your life when God has not spoken? There is nobody. But the blood of Jesus saves. The blood of Jesus heals. The blood of Jesus recovers, restores, renews. And as we drink this to be a partaker of this death, the Lord God will heal us in the name of Jesus. Amen. May we all drink together. Hallelujah. Praise God, Jesus. Hallelujah. We'll bless you. We worship you. We honor you. We glorify you. Pastor Sheena, please come over and please Thank take our tithes and offering. The blood of Jesus. Thank you for the blood.
God Almighty, for the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. When they say it washes white as snow, you got to have a vivid illustration. When you look at snow at the very beginning, it is clean, it is white, it is impeccable. And we are saying that our sins are a blot. But despite how black and how sinister the sin is, the blood of Jesus makes it white as snow. What a precious, a precious privilege. And I pray that the Lord God Almighty, having opened your intellect to understand that, will make you appreciate what has been done for you and hold it not with levity but with precious kindness. May this be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. It is time for tithes and offering. It's offering time. It is offering time. Let me uh, let me let me let me let me say this to you. To give is a privilege. To be able to give is what? Is a privilege. Because if you can give, it means you own. You can't give out of nothing. The Latin maxim says, Nemo, Nemo quod non dat habet. What you do not have, you cannot give. So, if you have, and you are able to give, it is indeed a privilege. Many people want to do so, but cannot do it. So, this is not a matter of cajoling, or begging you, or imploring you, it's just for you to understand and be happy and be happy that you are able to give. If you are writing a check, the recipient should be RPPT Ministries. All right? And there are different ways to give. Um, there's also Cash App and, uh, and there are different phone numbers. So if you need help, please see any of the ushers and they will definitely uh, enlighten you on how to do that. Are we ready? The choir is ready. Is the drummer ready? I want to hear the symbol. Is the drummer ready? There you go. Let's go. My hands are blessed. and sisters point those blessed hands to this basket. Indeed, it is written, even if Paul plants and Apollo's water, it is only God that giveth increase. So we are going to pray unto these seeds that the Lord God Almighty will give increase in the name of Jesus. What I'm trying to make you understand is that no matter your efforts, no matter what you give, if God doesn't say increase, it will not be so. But we know that our PPT ministry is a fertile ground. 
So whatever you give to this ministry, that the Lord God Almighty will give you a hundredfold more in the name of Jesus. The Bible says you will receive your reward in this earth and in the time to come, in the world to come. This is your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for the ability to give. We ask you, Lord God Almighty, that since you have made it in their heart, in your children's hearts to give, Lord God Almighty, and it is impossible for your words to go on, 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 unanswered. We ask you, Lord God, that this seed that has been planted will reap forth a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, according to David, as young as he was and as old as he became, that he has never seen the righteous suffer for bread, that your children will not want anything in Jesus' name. Amen. You are the Lord, our shepherd. We will not want anything good in Jesus' name. Amen. You will continue to provide for us because you are Jehovah Jireh. And Father in heaven, in protecting your children from the wilds of the enemy, this is their portion in Jesus' name. When they go out, Father in heaven, they are blessed. When they come back in, they are blessed. Everything that encompasses around them is blessed in Jesus' name. And peradventure for whatever reason. Your children have been praying for one thing or the other up till this time. Because I know you are God that answers prayers. And your timing is impeccable. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that you meet them at their point of need in Jesus' name. Amen. As we are seeing the end of 2021. And looking ahead to 2022. I say, Father in heaven, we will see that year in peace, Amen. in joy, Amen. and in righteousness. Amen. May this be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that we are living Father in heaven, I yield each and every one of us, body, soul, and spirit. We will go in peace. We will come back in peace. We will see each other in peace. And this will be our portion now and forevermore. In Jesus Christ's name we are prayed. And the church says it's a bigger. Amen. Can we share the grace together as one big united family? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. All the children, come in the front. Come and meet me.